This is number four in my Whiskey Diva series, where um, we're taking a closer look now at some Irish whiskeys. Uh, with St. Patrick's Day coming up, it seems like a good time to do it. Of course, we won't stop there. Uh, we're going to be looking at more Irish whiskeys. Um, I don't know how many will get covered between now and St. Patrick's Day, but we will also be continuing it after. We will be looking at Scotch. We will be looking at Bourbon. Uh, we will be looking at Straight American Whiskey. Um, Pretty much anything that really fits in the whiskey category. Um, in this one today, we're, we're, I'm actually doing Red Breast 12 year. Now, Red Breast, for those of you who aren't up on your Irish whiskey, and those of you who are, just bear with me. Um, Red Breast is a traditional Irish single pot still, distilled, uh, triple distilled, um, in terms of. So it goes through three distilling processes, which is pretty much unique to Irish whiskey. Uh, there are a few who don't do the full triple, uh, but there aren't many. Um, it's also a mix of malted and unmalted grains. Now, uh, scotch, for example, is all malted. Um, in America, we use corn, and so that's a little different. This is all barley, but it's malted and unmalted. The rationale or reason for that uh, dates back to the English. Uh, they put a tax on the malted barley, and anything the Irishman hated worse than the English, it was the English taxes. So what they did was they figured out just how much they could cut down on the malted barley with unmalted so they didn't have to pay the tax, or as much tax. And that kind of led to what is the distinctive um, Irish, traditional Irish whiskey flavor, uh, a big portion of it. Obviously, there are other um, factors, and it also is affected by uh, the cask or barrels that it's aged in. Now, typically, they are American oak uh, barrels that bourbon has been aged in, and then uh, it's brought over and they age um, Irish whiskey in. Or, uh, and or, uh, because they, some are a mix and some are strictly one or the other, they use uh, sherry casks that are made to order. They're European oak, and they put Oloroso sherry in them and age them. And then as once the sherry has been uh, taken out, they bring it back to, um, to Middleton um, Distillery, um, where they fill it then with um, a batch of um, the um, red breast. And the red breast is aged in sherry cask only. Some of the other red breast line will be uh, incorporate bourbon uh, barrel aged um, whiskey. Now this is 12 year. Uh, what that means for those of you not in the know is that uh, all these whiskeys, it's not just a single batch. Um, every batch that goes through is aged, but what they do is the blending comes in uh, after they take, it's still all from uh, single pot still, but they're different ages, and uh, the blender goes through, they look for characteristics that will complete what they're looking for in the 12 year. So the youngest whiskey is 12 years old, but there may be a uh, 13, or maybe a 14, maybe even a 15 in there, it depends. Um, typically, um, and that's going to vary with what, uh, what it takes for them to achieve the uh, flavor that they're after in this particular um, um, variation, the 12 year. Uh, they've done a masterful job. Uh, it's not a, won a number of awards. Um, it is a very flavorful, which is, that's one of the things that really, um, that you look for, that such a step up from the mass market versions of uh, Irish whiskey. Now this is made by Irish distillers. 
there are a number of brands under it. They, they, they kind of consolidated things. And, of course, that's Jameson's uh, is under it, uh, the Red Breast. And I'm trying to remember what else. There are several others. and um, But right now we're talking about Red Breast, so that's the important one. Um, it's made in the Middleton Distillery, which is one of the largest pot still distilleries um, in Ireland, if not uh, the world. I'm really not sure on the size, so don't quote me on that, but it's big. And they do a lot there. They consolidated their operations um, in, in a new distillery there years ago. Uh, well, I say years. It's relatively to the number of years that they've been making Irish whiskey. Uh, so what they talk about, one of the interesting notes, and I had not thought about it uh, that much when I was tasting it the first time. It, it's like it tasted familiar, but I couldn't quite place it. And now I understand. Um, it's um, a little bit the way they call Christmas cake or fruit cake. Uh, there is a fruitiness to it. Now, here in America, fruitcake is kind of regarded as something of a joke anymore. You give somebody a fruitcake, it's a, it's a chewy, hard log. But in places where it uh, is a better tradition, if you will, and really well made, um, yeah, it's, it's something special for the holidays, and I think probably more there than here, and, and especially in tradition. But you can smell that. You, you get the spiciness, but you get the fruitiness. It's a sweetness to it. Uh, it's very smooth. Uh, mm. Now I'm having um, basically about a finger and a half. I've got one ice cube, uh, and I put just a couple of drops of water in it. Again, that releases the notes. Now I'm not using a typical tasting glass, and the reason for that is um, I'm enjoying it the way you would typically. So what I'm doing is this is the way I would drink it just every day. Uh, I wish I could. I can't really afford that, but this is for something special. And if you have the money, it's not that expensive. It's in the 50s. Um, I've seen it as high as 59. I got it for like 52. Uh, depends on where you buy it. Um, again, you know, every state. There's not going to be a, a like a giant curve, but there will be some variation. Uh, state taxes have a lot to do with it. Um, and whether it's sold at a package store or a state ABC store, uh, like in Connecticut, for example, the wholesaler is supposed to set the price, which helps out these small independents because everybody's supposed to charge the same thing. Um, that there are a few workarounds to that. Um, you know, I understand. I can see both sides. Um, I like to not pay any more for it than I have to. Um, but that's a, that's another discussion altogether. Uh, and not something I really want to get into here other than just mentioning that there, there's lots of different prices, but it's still in the same general area. That's affordable. Now, it's not something I can drink every day. I, I can't afford to buy uh, one of these every couple of weeks. Uh, well, especially in my business because um, I don't get, I get to have this and I'll get to enjoy it for a while after, but uh, I'm moving on and trying new things uh, so I can share them with you. This, though, is, a, this is the good one. This is the one that you can't afford. You want to sit back. You, you want to share with somebody. Whether you're just, you know, it's um, you're celebrating the end of the week, um, you know, some special event, and sometimes you you just want a, a, a little step up. You know, okay, you drink this most of the time, but you know, today just feels special. I really want to enjoy it. It's the weekend or whatever. I want to go watch the sunset or or anything. It just really everybody's got their thing that, that they want, then this is this the Irish whiskey that you reach for. Mm. Now, when I say spiciness, I'm talking, um, these are the notes more like um, baking spice, if you will. Um, and they kind of blend together. Um, you notice it there, but they may pop a little more, a little less. Uh, toasted Woods. Now that is kind of like the, the next stage. Um, certain aromas will hit you up front, some a little louder. Um, again, it depends on so many things. Um, our, I've mentioned this before and I'll probably mention it many times again. Our sensitivity to certain smells, and we all process them slightly different. We compare them to what we recognize, and it may not be the same thing, it's the same notes. You know, they just remind somebody else of something different. And, and um, you know, I, I understand where they come from. I'm very appreciative of it. It 
adds up to something very enjoyable. Again, this is um, this is an excellent whiskey. This is probably the best Irish whiskey I've ever tried. Um, and again, I I've got seven or eight Irish whiskeys now, and they're all slightly different, except um, in the in the base end, they tend to be very close, but as you move up the lines, they differentiate a bit in um, how they um, distill them, how they age them, um, so that it makes a, a much bigger difference in the glass once you get it home. Um, and but they're all good; they all have their place. They all occupy a certain niche or niche. So anyway, uh, this is a little more of the in-depth and a little more of the background um, on the Red Breast 12 Euro um, whiskey. The other little note, um, the name itself, the Red Breast, they chose that for the Robin Red Breast, which happens to be one of the few birds that winters in Ireland, so they hang around. And um, so that was something kind of traditional, which is the way they make this. It seemed like a good uh, match. And so they, they've made that. Um, again, now it goes on up, and you can spend some serious money on the Red Breast line. Um, not having tried like the 15-year-old and, and up, um, I would say that if you have the money, it's probably well worth the investment um, based on what I'm getting from here. Um, I want to thank you for tuning in and joining me this evening. Um, I'm working some more, again, just kind of let you know what's coming. We're uh, working on some more uh, recipes. We just did one last night. And um, I'm also going to be working on some more of the individual tastings. I think next up I'm going to be uh, talking about the Irishman, Founders Reserve. Um, so we'll be spending a little time with that. I'm hoping to add some more in the interim uh, for those of you in the know. Again, um, I, nobody, I, I don't get... Um, I get no compensation or sponsorship from any of the distilleries. Uh, these are all my own opinions. Um, so, I mean, you can take them for what they're worth, but th this is, that it has no, um, nothing prejudicing it other than the quality of the Irish whiskey. Um, so I'm interested in some of the others that we'll be bringing on and we'll be trying uh, both now and between now and St. Patrick's Day and some after. Um, I do have other work that I have to do. I wish I could just do this. But um, anyway, thank you again. Uh, if you have questions or comments, um, you can post them on my YouTube channel. Um, or you can uh, email me at missbree at thedarkdivarules.com. Or, um, you know, check out my um, links to the video. will be posted on my Instagram, uh, my uh, Facebook, and my Twitter accounts. And uh, so look for those, and you can make comments there if you like. Um, I'm always interested in your feedback, um, good or bad. Uh, just if it's not good, at least be nice about it. Um, I, I really do strive to do this as um, the best I know how, but I'm always uh, open to improvement. And so I'm receptive of constructive criticism, okay? Thank you. <laughs> I'm not insinuating that you wouldn't be, but, you know, you, you kind of got to. There's crazy people out there these days. Um, this is an in-depth on uh, Red Breast 12-year-old uh, Irish whiskey. Very good. Highly recommended. Uh, I'm the Whiskey Diva, the Dark Diva, Miss Bree, and as always, cheers.